Welcome to What You Doing. I'm Roz Goldon Woodie, and we are joined by WNBA superstar Brianna Stewart, live from the WNBA bubble in Florida. What's up, Stewie? What you doing? Black eye and all. What's, what's... <laughs> yeah, so I got I got elbowed. Um, the day before we had our pictures, so of course, you know, fitted, come back to the league type of thing. Um, it didn't turn black, so I'm happy about that, but I have these stereo strips on. Hey, you're still ready for your close-up. Uh, Stewie, you're arguably the top player in the WNBA. In 2018, the Seattle Storm were champions. Uh, I was there for the championship game. Yeah. We interviewed you. You were the finals MVP that year. You were the league MVP in 2018. But then you ruptured your Achilles and you missed all of last season. Right. So now you're making your return to the 2020 season in the WNBA bubble in Florida. And you've had some of your first team practices. So basketball wise, what are some aspects of the game that are coming back naturally? And what are some yeah. aspects of the game that are still a little awkward? I guess made my comeback in January with Team USA at UConn, stuff like that. Um, went overseas following that, played a few games in Russia. And then when March hit, as you know, and everyone else knows, the coronavirus kind of took over everything. I came back home um, and was just in Seattle. Uh, so not being able to really play basketball from March until July, end of June, July, was obviously difficult and difficult coming off of an Achilles injury. Um, but I think the best thing I did was just continue to stay in shape. And, and that's what really helped. You know, I feel like my body is probably the best it's ever been as far as core strength and balance and my feet feel great. Um, and I think the thing that, that just takes time is you know, you talk about 2018. I haven't been with my team in two years, which is crazy. It's crazy to me. Um, and now getting you know, back and getting used to it and just getting accustomed to playing with everybody else again. Does it feel like the chemistry is just there now that you guys have a lot of time to be around each other? Yeah, I mean, we that's, that's the one thing we talked about. We don't have anything else to do here besides, you know, go hoop and work out and, and kind of be around each other. And the chemistry comes back. And for sure, you know, you know our team. We were always we're always super cool around each other, um, and it's just getting getting used to all the the differences. You know, we're obviously without our head coach Dan, who was unable to come to the bubble. So we have Klopp kind of stepping up as as the head coach, and then just getting back. You know, Sue and I both didn't play last year. We added three new pieces, which is really going to help our team. But um, it's a lot of pieces to put together in a short amount of time. A lot of analysts actually are picking the Seattle Storm as the top team in the league coming back. So you open the season with that kind of expectation yep. against the number one draft pick in Sabrina Ionescu and the New York Liberty. You were also a number one draft pick in yep. 2016. What do you think will be the most challenging part of her transition to the W. Sabrina and I have a lot of parities, but also we have some differences, and those differences are just the way that the season is turning out to be this year. You know, I got drafted, and then it was like two, three weeks later, I went to Seattle, we had training camp. She got drafted, and nobody's playing basketball. So I think it's, you know, she's learning on the fly. She's, she's obviously a smart basketball player, and she has an opportunity to really lead her team because they have seven rookies. The first game of the WNBA season, it's, it's going to feature Sabrina, number one draft pick. Um, and it's also going to feature uh, the Seattle Storm, which means the return of both you and Sue Bird to the court together. And this big moment is going to happen with no fans. <laughs> Stewie, can, 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 you, can you still feel the hype of this? Um, I can I can still feel the hype. You know, it's going to be the returns versus the debut. And, and that's really what it's going to be. Um, it's going to be interesting with no fans. For those who are in the bubble, what is it like getting tested every day for COVID-19? Is it uncomfortable? Is it invasive? For those of us sitting at home, we may not understand what, what it's like to do that. Yeah, so like a little rundown of, of what we have to do. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I have to do um, a temperature check. So they gave us all this like thermometer and you stick it up under your armpit and you, you do your temperature. And then you go on 
um, a health app and you log your symptoms and you say, I've had no symptoms. I haven't been um, exposed to the coronavirus in 24 hours, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have like a schedule where the 12 teams um, basically go and get tested and depending on what time. So mine has not happened yet today, but every day we go get tested and they do the nasal and then they do the throat swab. So it's not the one where it touches your brain. So for all the people who are thinking that, it's not that. Uh, But it it does go pretty deep and we are creating favorites on the people that we like to do the test because some people are more aggressive than others and it's kind of like, all right, go to this one, go to this one. Um, But it's it's crazy. You know, I was tested obviously um, three times before coming into the bubble and then one time um, earlier in June. And now since July 6th, I've been tested every day. You and Sue both didn't play last season. You're making a grand return. July 25th, WNBA starts up. I have learned you never doubt Sue Bird. But for those wondering, Sue Bird is 39 years old. And as the years stack up every year, it's a little different, Sue. You're still 25. You're young. You haven't even learned about what them 30s is like. (laughs) But uh, what are signs you've seen so far that Sue Bird still got it? I mean, like you said, you never doubt Sue. And I know she's still got it because she's still here. And she knows her body better than anybody else. And she takes care of her body better than anybody. She's making sure that she's continuing to be at her best and be at her best for, for herself, but also for us, for the team and knowing that do what she can to help us. And um, she looks great, you know, I think. She's 39, she'll be 40 in October, and I think she needs to kind of steal a page out of Jamal Crawford's book and say, I turned 20 twice. Um, Stewie, we get it. You're excellent. (laughs) We get it. Uh, We're talking to a four-time NCAA champion with UConn, a four-time NCAA tournament most outstanding player, a three-time national player of the year. Uh, You were the number one draft pick. You were also the rookie of the year. Uh, You're a WNBA champion. You're a league MVP. You were the finals MVP. If we go overseas, you were the EuroLeague MVP. You've been a FIBA Cup MVP. At the highest level, you're an Olympic gold medalist. Oh, and you're only 25. I'm out of breath, but um, Stewie, what are some things that Stewie is not good at? <laughs> um, in my normal life. <laughs> um, There's levels to this. That is such that is such a, a flex right there. <laughs> yeah, in your normal uh, life, Stewie. <laughs> um, I don't know. Dang, I'm you're not, good at everything. I'm not super artsy. I don't know. I'm not. I Can you know. sing? No, I can't sing. There's another one. Nope, no singing. I know you're on beat on the court. Can you dance though? I don't dance either. So there's that. So um, Stewie, I, I want to make sure to give you your props on this and also touch on this because it's important. The WNBA continues to step up to answer the call for change. And you're only 25, but you've already used your platforms to speak up on a number of things. Black Lives Matter, um, LGBTQ issues, the Me Too movement. Stuart, you've even stepped up and and, and been at the forefront of talking about uh, family planning and different techniques for women. You are absolutely an ally. And you are a player in a WNBA in a league that is 80% black. What is it like to be a white woman in a league that is very majority, predominantly black? Um, I mean, I think the thing is, is to be white in a league that's predominantly black. Um, you know, we know, like you said, the WNBA has always been at the forefront of fighting for equality and social justice and things like that. And I think, you know, I know that my platform has been brought to me because of the basketball player that I continue to to be and build on and stuff like that. And that's where I really, really am able to have a voice. Um, But I think to be in this league, to be an ally, 
to the black community, to my teammates, to the people on, on our staff and, and beyond. Um, it's just something that's, it's what's right. I mean, it's important to me. I, I feel like our world, our country needs to continue to kind of get with the times, you know, we need to, to create that change and create a change that lasts. And I think, um, we're doing a lot of things in the right direction. You know, you see what's been going on, especially these past few months from the things that have blown up on social media, whether it's George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, or unfortunately the list can go on and on and on. Uh, but continuing to, to kind of, and continuing to educate myself, continuing to, to be a voice for the voiceless, uh, really make the world a better place. I mean, obviously I want to be the best basketball player I can be, but it's selfish of me if I don't try to do more than just be a great basketball player. And really the, the entire focus of this season is going to be dedicated to Black Lives Matter and social justice and um, putting an end to racism. And I think that you know we have a lot that we want to do. And you're going to see, you're going to see us wear the t-shirts and I have custom shoes and stuff like that. But we're going to try and put some action into play in creating um, long lasting change. You had some custom uh, Souls by Sir kicks mm -hmm. and they were custom Black Lives Matter say her name shoes those were fly yeah so I actually I actually just got the box I haven't even opened it I can open it right now if you want if you want to see Come it on. let's do uh, it I want to see let it. me let me go get the scissors <laughs> give me <laughs> okay, one second cool. sound good on the front side um in the yellow obviously it says Black Lives Matter um and these are victims of police brutality wait on, uh, the, on the on the black side are names of, of victims yep um and he was able to obviously like do it so he would still write black lives matter mm -hmm. awesome. in it. this side is more about like how the protests were you know the messages a lot of the signs that we've saw we've seen at, at protests um, time for change, time for Black, change. Lives Black Lives Matter, um, we see you. And then my other shoe is focusing more on the female aspect. Say her name, obviously Breonna Taylor. Um, still, we still need to uh, get justice for her, her death. Um, and on the inside is this is the trans transgender and these are obviously the same as the the fist that we all see of, of different colors and i think that mm -hmm. there's been a lot of black trans lives that have been lost in the past few months and the past year and i think it's something that continues to we need to continue to look at and um pay attention to because you know, we talk about equality and equality comes in all different races, forms, whatever the case may be, and everyone needs it. Now, Scooby, we are at the end of the show and every what you doing ends with a challenge. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> all right, well, Stewie, your challenge is one that's specific to the fact that you are coming to us live from the WNBA bubble in Florida. Mm -hmm. So we have asked for your challenge to be the Stewie's Wubble Tour Challenge. Well, I'll ask you a few questions and you just kind of tell, tell me how you see the Wubble. Okay. WNBA and Bubble. Yeah. Put together, you see what we did yeah. there? Mm -hmm. How you see the Wubble through Stewie's eyes. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. First up, Wubble Drip. How'd you pack? Um, to be honest, I brought a lot of, of um, sporty casual, Nike Tech shorts, things like that, like these shorts, like, you know, like it's hot in Florida. So I brought one pair of jeans because I'm like, maybe I need to wear jeans for something. I have no idea. 
Uh, but otherwise, it's comfy. Comfy right. drip. Wubble meals. How you eating, Stewie? The first four days, we had to like stay in our room. And that was where it was kind of tricky because obviously everyone has different diets. Um, I am actually a pescatarian plus bacon. Um, and the options was either vegan or non-vegan. So I just took vegan. Uh, but now, you know, having a kitchen, I'm able to cook. Like last night, I had um, crab cakes, which were amazing. I, I talked about Pike Place Market earlier. I, b I ordered some frozen fish from Pike's Place, and now I have it here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to understand. Maybe I'm not as well-versed in the different diets, but you're a pescatarian plus bacon? Yeah. Like, what is, like what I is can't get rid of the bacon in the morning yet. <laughs> like, I'm not there yet, but maybe soon. I don't know. Stewie, you know, the WNBA made headlines for the living and eating conditions right at the start of entering the Wubble. Yeah. How much of that was hype, and how much of that was real? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the things that everyone saw, um, and I think when we came here, we knew it wasn't going to be what we were used to 100%. You know, it's not going to be, I'm coming to Florida. It's not going to be the same. Um, so I think that adjustment took a second. And also the fact that the league was doing the best they could to make the best out of every situation possible. So yeah, there was some problems in the beginning, but they got worked out. We've all been in worse conditions and to be here, to have all that, all that we have, we are fortunate. Um, it's just a little bit of adjustment from, from every side of things, but now we're solid. What's something you brought with you to make your, to make your room feel like home? Um, what did I bring? I brought my diffuser and I brought my candles. I'm like a big candle person. I like to have candles, so I, I definitely brought those. Um, and then sneakers. I have sneakers. I don't have a ton, but I have, I don't have like the 80 like PJ, but. What's something about the Wubble, the WNBA bubble, that exceeded your expectations? Um. Something about the wobble that exceeded my expectations, I think is just the fact that everyone's really willing to help. Everyone's really willing to make our experience as best as possible. Um, we have bikes, which is kind of cool. Uh, so everybody, you see all the different teams and stuff like that. Everybody has bikes, so they're riding their bikes around and it's kind of like summer camp. You know, you're seeing like the other day, I, I rode past Candace. Um, and then it's just like, I have Chicago Sky as my neighbor and all these people. Um, but yeah, that and everybody's just really trying to help. Everybody is, is having a good attitude. The staff has been great here at IMG and mm -hmm. just appreciative of them. So, all right, on the other side, Wubble Struggle. What's something <laughs> about the Wubble that did not meet your expectations? Um... I think my, the first place that I was living, um, I moved. Uh, <laughs> it was, I was at the one villa where uh, the laundry room was a little sus and all that. Um, the laundry room has since been updated and remodeled and it looks very nice. Good. Um, but like I said, it was some growing pain. It was, right. it was just a lot of things that, you know, we weren't entirely accustomed to. Um, were those videos out of your laundry room? That was the shared laundry room in my space. Okay. And like, that was another thing. It was like, we didn't have our own laundry, which was expected because it's like. Who are your Wubble roomies? Uh, my Wubble roomies are Jordan, Canada, and Epiphany Prince. Oh my God, that's a squad, that's a room. Mm -hmm. Those are my people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you think your room could beat any other room in basketball on the storm? Ooh, that's a squad. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, because <laughs> why not? Right, 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 right. Make sure you tell them I said what's up. Yeah. Well. Um, all right, so uh, Stewie, thank you so much for taking us on Stewie's Wubble Tour. Do you have any closing remarks to those who have taken the tour with you? Um, closing remarks to those that have been here with me is uh 
appreciate you for for coming along for the tour. Uh, continue to stay tuned for what what's going on in the Wobble and continue to kind of support um, us here in Florida with the WNBA. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.